Join us for a driving review of the Polestar 2. Let's go. In front here you can see a sporty stance on the road by the Polestar 2, the Thor's Hammer LED lamps here with a daytime running light, this is then Volvo Heritage inspired and it starts with LED headlamps and if you get the so-called plus package in certain markets already included now then you also get the pixel LED so for a more extensive elaborated LED function. 4 meters 60, 15 foot 1 or 181 inches is the length of the Polestar 2 and taking the Tesla Model 3 but also the internal combustion competitors here in this mid-size sedan segment. You can see the shape is indeed Typical mid-size sedan with a beautiful roof line right there. Strong shoulders, actually a little bit sports car-like. Then you have the contrasting bumpers, so more, yeah, you know, somewhat of a crossover style as well. Then we can see it was also interesting the side mirrors here. They are frameless or almost frameless. One of the first times we see that. I think it's a very beautiful integration. And you can see here very flat roof line, also not so high with the windows right there. In the rear you can also see a very sleek design. You realize that the Polestar CEO Thomas Ingenlad is a designer at heart. <laughs> then you can see here the light strip goes all over the vehicle right there and then forming this C on both sides, Polestar logo. And then this contrast between the vehicle color and the black lower part of course here even more contrastish because it's a wide vehicle. About charging and battery. So this is on the driver's side. 11 kilowatt AC charging up to 150 kilowatt DC charging of that 78 kilowatt hour battery gross or 72.5 kilowatt net. And that will give us a range officially 470 kilometers and 290 miles. But if we are a little bit more realistic and depending on situation, 440 kilometers or 270 miles, that's you know, what you can always come with. This is the car key. This is a small downside. This is, you know, really cheap and plasticish. Um, the only good thing is that they don't use a leather wrap, but I think a leather wrap, for example, would be a suitable solution for that. Opening and closing. Other than that, you rather use the keyless entry, put your hand on the outside to close it, and on the. Oh, that. Look at that. How. How this. The side mirror here. I'm going to open it again. It's just slightly, obviously it doesn't go all the way in. Hmm, interesting. But then again, here with the f almost frameless, what a beautiful design of this side mirror. Yeah, just, just again, you know, when I, when I close it, I would expect it to fold in a little bit closer to the vehicle. Hmm, interesting. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we like to take a look at details. So then, inside of the vehicle, here, there's a soft touch material on the top part, and it's some kind of fabric. It's, um, you know, it's looking slick, but it's rather rough surface from what you feel. But overall, I think a good choice. Then soft material here and here as well. Then this Scandinavian bright fabric design, really cool, memory seating. The door pockets are rather slim. 
Then first look at the interior. The steering wheel is similar to the one we see in recent Volvos, for example. Then dashboard material is um, not exactly hard packed, a little bit soft. And again, this fabric surface, everything looks and feels really good. The floor mats, by the way, I like them because they are so easy to pop in and out here. So they're really secure and safe, but then it's so easy to pop in and out that you can actually clean them or just, you know, you know shake them a little bit around on the outside so to me those details you know are really interesting then the seats one of the key features here this car is really vegan from the interior so animal free materials both on the steering wheel and on the seats here either with this black design or you can also get a bluish design actually they still unlike tesla offer animal skin option but that's of course not really necessary and also doesn't make sense because these seats here interesting the outside fabric is a little bit, you know, rougher and more open cell, I would say, from the material. The inside looks slick. It looks like a leatherette, but it also has some kind of a structure to be more breathable, actually. And so the big advantage then also just practical-wise is these seats will stay cooler in summer and warmer in winter, unlike the animal skin option, which you should not go for for ethical reasons, environmental reasons, and of course also just for practical reasons. So very good job by Polestar to introduce that. The performance pack here introduces also these golden seat belts. I like that. So it's a nice contrast to that. Getting inside is like typically with the mid-size sedan. And you find a good seating position. The seats are also quite comfortable from the first impression. Zoom auto driving. The lower part you can put out. And this fabric material is really something very new. It's very interesting. It doesn't feel... I mean, this is like a typical fabric material you find in cars, which is totally good. But this one here, indeed new. And I think they really wanted to do that to combine somehow, you know, functionality and the design looks. So a very interesting approach. And we would really like to see more of that. That shows that it's really possible to combine sustainability and premium. This is what it, this car is actually all about. Then putting the steering wheel in and out and up and down to find your position. I'm 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1. <laughs> you know that was from my Insta channel at thomas.letsgo. And here headroom is pretty close to the outside, a little bit further than to the inside. Interior overview, first a general overview for you general overview <laughs> then here the steering wheel again volvo inspired i think they could do something more in the future there to differentiate it from the volvo models right side here to control something of the instruments on the left or here the volume up and down voice input you can also activate here or then just with the speech input soon more to that left side then for the cruise control functions on the middle part here you have the vertical screen so it's about 11 inches and the left digital instrument is 12.3 inches and the overall design is very clean optional harm and color sound system or included in the plus package which is in some markets now also included really depends on market specifications then here again softer dashboard and the nice fabric here with a rather rough surface but a very interesting one then the matte wood experience here and also at the inside there so a beautiful interior design this inductive charging pad for your smartphone but you also have two usb-c chargers right there in the front then we have this crystal look volume knob thank you so much that we still have a manual volume knob that's really cool in the play on stop button assistant systems you can also activate or deactivate and everything has a clear overview actually you see the battery is not quite full yet but definitely enough and here look at that how easy everything is i mean it is so intuitive even if you have never seen the system yet then the camera system here again you can reach it right there and this then is this app view for the um you know for the Android system, you can use the Play Store and install new apps. This is something that we will be now build uh, more and more that you can install more and more apps. Well, here the temperature is in the screen and to reach that while driving, this is maybe the only flaw. I like to have separate climate knobs, but the design of the car hardly makes it possible. Seat heating here and also heated steering wheel, but the voice assistant is so sophisticated that in this case, it's easy actually. There will be Apple CarPlay available by the way later on. 
yeah, in 2021 and with auto actually not the reason is you don't need it because this is an android system already and you can do everything with it you would connect your phone via bluetooth for the contacts and so on and here you just then say yeah or use the google assistant um google maps of course look at how responsive that is and we all know google maps is the best set nav and it really you know includes all the live data and you can just you know get to the destination very quickly hey google drive me to berlin berlin is five Perfect. hours and 49 minutes from your location by car in light traffic so i mean that's totally flawless and also you know how quickly everything was realized from the voice input rear here inside of the doors also with the soft touch fabric then again the bright scandinavian furniture design right there and also the same seat design in the rear with the nice contrasting seat belts as well hey we had three contrasting seat belts here in the rear way to go <laughs> and in the middle climate unit you also have seat heating for the rear outside seats and also Behind this cover, there are two more USB-C chargers. So, you know, it's not like a typical EV-only platform. So, let's see about the result there. And like one buys, it's actually no problem. So, again, with one means A6 or 6 with one, enough like room left. Uh, when the seat is in the lowest position, I can hardly put my feet under it. So, um, when you have you know, big feet like I do, <laughs> then you should raise the driver seat a little bit, say, hello driver, could you put the seat a little bit higher? Thank you. And then you can even, you know, better fit with your with your feet here. Maybe that's one design flaw. The seat should have been flatter from the lower part. Um, headroom wise exactly fits for me. So my hairs do touch the steering when I put up my spine. Uh, so I think it's you know it's still okay. 405 to 1095 liters is the boot capacity with folded seats. Here the button below, clean design integration, but that might catch a lot of dirt then while driving. That's the downside of it. But you can also open it with the key fob, for example. This is really cool. A fastback opening, big difference to the Tesla Model 3, which has this typical sedan opening. This is way easy to load things in and out. If you don't want to open that wide. You can also, for example, stop it in this position and hold in this position then the opening button after, you know, beeping sound occurs. Next time it will also stop in this position. This top cover here you can remove if you like. We cannot clip the seats or fold the seats from here. You could reach over. I'll soon do that. What is interesting that we have a trunk split right here. This is really cool. We know that from Volvo models as well to secure, for example, when you just want to put a backpack in here and you don't want it to fly all over the place or just to split it here for a cabin trolley. This, I think, is a great, easy solution like this, you know, and then it can't, you know, slide all over the trunk. You can see it also fits in here in the vertical way, no problem, actually. And then below that, you could then again also store your charging cables. This is a body cover here for shows, for example, but, um, you know, this doesn't belong to the car at all, as a customer then. This is actually good space also for the charging cables because the rear trunk is always better to open, so you can, you know, vary that. Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge with the Polestar 2. We go through different driving situations, city, motorway, suspension, overview, and so on. One pedal driving, so everything you need to know. So at the moment, I got everything in the standard mode. So this is then a harsh recuperation, strong recuperation. So when I lift the throttle, really you know, recuperates very well. So you actually don't need the brake pedal in most situations. You just have this one pedal driving feeling and that's actually cool and I think it's also a safety thing um, because when you just use one pedal um, and you lift the, your foot off the throttle then you immediately brake and in the time you would need to switch from the acceleration pedal to the brake pedal 
that is, you know, a second that calls to time in deceleration. So I think that's definitely a safety thing to leave it like this. You can also put it to low, for example. So, you know, let's say you, um, you don't want to use this in, in that way, then the recuperation is a little bit less actually. And you could also put it to absolutely off. So here now low, you see the car rolls a little bit further actually. And then that's it, or off then if you just want the roll. And of course, when you use the brakes, you still do regenerate um, energy. It's just that, you know, it's a different setting. Here, creep mode, by the way, when I set the creep mode to on, then, well, now it's like uphill, but then uh, the car creeps a little bit forward when you stand still, like this. Now, now it works. Here, creeping a little bit forward. That's more like a normal automatic gearbox, for example. I like this feature actually also for traffic, for example. Then you roll a little bit forward just by releasing the brakes. I would leave it like this. The overall driving feeling then, if you would forget, you know, for, for a thing that you have, you know, this electric drive, it could at some point also be a Volvo X60 or something. Then again, we have the stiffer right here. Um, so this is the thing about this car, it's not, you know, it's not not normal, so you feel like driving a normal mid-size sedan, it's not that spaceship and unique like with the, te like, like the Tesla Model 3, when you drive the Tesla Model 3, it's really like, unlike anything else, so this is more normal car-like, so to say, but then it adds this, you know, this special characteristics, its unique features, and I can just say that everything that that set this part here apart, for example, from the Volvo A60 combustion engine, is indeed better. There's better acceleration. Um, the car has a lower center of gravity that makes it feel very sporty when I'm doing, you know, lane changes here. It really feels like a, you know, like a serious sports car. So everything they made EV here really improved it. Then you have the good software. What's also interesting, by the way, is that you can change the temperature, let's say in a little bit better way. So when you click in the lower part and center part, then here. This is easier to change temperature while driving, for example, when you have this bigger display. So, um, um, yeah, that's somewhat okay. Click here in the lower part, you know, right here on the temperature. So it's, yeah, I mean, it's a little bit distressing, yes. You can also have a two-zone AC, by the way, right and left, so this is a quite big display for that. Now, more acceleration, 102, let's see. Whoa. And 180 kilometers an hour. You see here, already when we're at speed, still a good acceleration. But that BMW was also quite fast. And now, to 160 kilometers an hour and still Good as well, noise insulation is really silent here. You know, remember, when we're in electric vehicles, there's no engine sound that would cover wind noise and so on. And therefore, this insulation is even more important here. And that was also perfectly fine. Here now, at about 130, 125 miles, uh, 125 kilometers an hour. Yeah, that would be a little bit fast. So 130 would be some, you know, 80 miles, typical motorway speed, also with a higher motorway speed. And that's once again, totally fine great noise insulation, also higher speeds. Lucky that we are on German motorway today and we can test an even higher speed. And wow, such a fun to accelerate out even at higher speeds. So amazing. Look at that, 180 kilometers an hour. And again, it's not exceedingly noisy here or so. Really cool. And when I lift the throttle again, good recuperation. Getting inside here. What a cool experience. And yeah, it was time to take it out to the German motorway. That's what we did here today. Um, the only thing that is missing is a proper consumption test. Um, so when you accelerate it out in that way, of course, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not that realistic. You don't do that all the time. So let me reset the consumption meter. Click again to confirm. And let's put it to a cruise control speed to 100 kilometers an hour, here we go, and let's see what the consumption then says, let me 
to the right lane that everyone can drive faster now. So, because then when we have the new calculated energy consumption then, we can then calculate once again with the battery, with the net size of the battery, which would be a more realistic range as for our test. We'll wait just a little bit, drive a little bit further, and then present you the result in the final conclusion. But once again, driving dynamics is awesome. Maybe a little bit more feel in the steering wheel, but then when you set a little bit stiffer here in the mode, it's actually quite cool. It's a lot of fun to drive, low center of gravity, so agile feeling of this vehicle, more agile than any other mid-size sedan. It feels sportier also than the Tesla Model 3, even though it doesn't have like the hyper performance acceleration, but it's more than enough. It has some serious power, really good. Recuperation is good, one pedal driving feeling is good. The noise insulation is well done. So there's hardly anything to complain about. The seats here also give you a good long-term support and so on. So this is again, just like we've seen exterior design styling-wise, interior and so on. Such an awesome vehicle, can't say otherwise. And now we're back here with our conclusion for today with the Polestar 2. The white color here, by the way, is called Snow, so Snow White. Exterior, a strong stance here, typical mid-sized sedan shape, but with a lot of sporty elements, so I think really likable. Interior, a clean design, clean layout, high build quality, and actually in this case, totally animal-free materials. Yes, they still offer the option, but most people probably won't go for it and there's also a reason behind it. So, a very good interior, also have enough space. The only two minor things is when you sit in the rear, you should put the seats in the front a little bit higher for a better, you know, foot position in the rear and also the co-driver seat, the passenger seat, we always use ready terms here. Um, there are also, when you put your feet in the very, very front, you have long legs, then there should also be a little bit more space for your feet. These are two minor flaws. Other than that, yeah, there could be still climate knobs. We know a lot of us guys really appreciate that, but the voice input is just superb. The whole infotainment system is the best you can get, actually. The Google integration, there's nothing better here at the moment. Also the GPS and so on. The voice input is just so fast and so flawless. So the thoughts behind this vehicle are really, really good. That we have the fastback opening in the rear, for example, as well. So this is the vehicle Audi, BMW and Mercedes should, brought, should have brought out five years ago. This is it. This is a very contemporary vehicle now. It serves almost all needs and it's just an awesome ride. It's very quick, very performant, yet at the same time it's comfortable in the riding experience. The um, energy consumption here in our test is about 17 kilowatt hours on, in 100 kilometers. That's about 27 kilowatt hours on 100 miles. And how did I do this calculation? I just asked the infotainment system. Hey Google, 17 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers in kilowatt hours per 100 miles. And then it said 27. So, and that also confirms our approximate range figure of about 440 kilometers or 270 miles. And I think that's also absolutely sufficient. So, you need a charging infrastructure at home or at work. That's of course with every electric vehicle that, you know, shouldn't rely all on the, you know, on the remote charging stations and the public charging stations and so on. But other than that, I think this is actually the mid-sized car to go for. The Tesla Model 3, of course, two strong competitors now. The Tesla has some tweaks here and there, some very good things. Um, maybe it's a little bit more efficient here and there, for example. And um, it's a different infotainment system, for example. However, the poles are better in the interior build quality, for example. The driving dynamics is also superb, actually. So they're really, really very close. At the moment, probably I would rather tend a little bit towards this one here. And it's rather clear that when you have your charging infrastructure cleared, this car here really exceeds the performance of the internal combustion engine, uh, uh, internal combustion engine competitors. And that's something really astonishing. So what a surprising experience here with the Polestar 2. Really impressed here today. What's your opinion? 
please discuss it in the comments and also what you think about the comparison then to the competitors. We'll also link some interesting videos for you in the video description and also in the pinned comment. Thank you so much for tuning in today. See you next time.